Welcome to today's reflection. Some verses from St Luke's Gospel, chapter 23. Jesus on the road to the cross and a man coming in from the country. As they led Jesus away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of people followed him. Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And the people stood by watching. But the leader scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was an also an inscription put over his head, which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who was hanging there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same condemnation? We indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. So wrote Charles Dickens about the French Revolution. And he might well have been commenting on the day that Jesus went to the cross and hung there. For that day was when the greatest revolution in the world began. It was the worst of times because the dark forces of evil in all their mighty power were railed against Jesus, represented by the brutality and derision of the soldiers the hatred of the Jewish authorities, the betrayal of the crowd. But it was the best of times, because Jesus was victorious over them all, defeated them all, and was indeed the King of the Jews, King Jesus. The mockery was turned in on itself. And on that walk and at that cross, not only was the world changed for good, forever but people were changed too and one of them was Simon of Cyrene. Cyrene was a city in North Africa where a large community of Jews lived and worshipped in the synagogue of the free men. He had come to Jerusalem no doubt to celebrate the Passover and was looking forward probably to a great celebratory day an onlooker of this strange and noisy procession, he is suddenly dragged into it to be a major part of this dramatic event by being made to help carry the cross of Jesus. What were his feelings? Well, we're not told, but he must have been feeling that this his day had gone really wrong. Disaster happened. Jesus must have been in a terrible condition. He'd been up all night in agony in the Garden of Gethsemane. He'd been beaten and whipped and thorns pressed down upon his head in that crown of thorns. Was he moving too slow and the soldiers wanted to get on and get the job finished so they could get home? Is that why they plucked this man from the crowd and made him help Jesus carry the cross? 
because it was a most unusual thing for them to do. It was part of the humiliation of, of prisoners that they should carry their cross, no matter how weak they'd become. But can we see God's hand in this? St Mark, writing, in his, writing his gospel from Rome 50 years later, tells us more about Simon, that he was the father of Rufus and Alexander. And it's believed that his encounter with Jesus on the road to the cross that day made him a believer. He became a Christian. And so did all his, and his family became believers too. And that they were workers together with the apostles in the spread of the gospel in the church at Rome. And it's also known that there was a, Christ, a Christian church grew up in Cyrene later on. St Paul knew that family because in Romans 16 he sends greetings to a number of people who've helped and supported him in his work. Among them is Rufus, who Paul says is an outstanding worker in the Lord's service. And he also sends greetings to Rufus's mother, Simon's wife, and he says of her, she is treated me like a son. What, what is behind those simple words? She's always treated me like a son. They speak volumes, don't they? How grateful St Paul must have been to have a place of safety, a comfortable home he could turn to when he was weary and tired and suffering in the work of the gospel. She has always treated me like a son. And it also gives us a glimpse into the life and work of the early church. They were a family, a church family, caring for each other, looking out for each other, supporting each other. And how grateful we are to belong to our church family, the family of God, where we find help and support, friendship and comfort and all that we need. An encounter with Jesus on the road to the cross brought a whole family into living service in the work of the church, loving and committed service. In St Luke's Gospel, chapter 9 and verse 23, Jesus said this, If anyone would come after me, let him take up his cross and follow me. As Christians, we are challenged to put Jesus first in our lives. We are not simply called to believe and trust in him, but to follow him with commitment. To belong to the church family. And when we do, we will find that there is no greater joy in life. And so let us pray. Our gracious God and loving Father, help us to take up our cross and follow Jesus with a willing heart and find that it is the way of fullness of life, of joy and peace. In his name we pray. Amen.